How are you doing? Welcome to live stream number 154. Today is May 3rd, 2018. Today we're going to talk about modeling, sculpting, patching, and then how to build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> really appreciate you taking the time to uh, join today's live stream. My name is Lars Christensen and uh, this is about uh, 20, 30 minutes uh, of uh, just trying to add a little bit more value um, to, um, to your Fusion 360 experience. So let's see, we are live, we got people in here, time, time to go. Let's talk about um, mixing things up a little bit. Uh, so this is a question I've gotten all following up on yesterday's answering uh, questions. This is a um, question I've got a few times and that's in regard to when the heck should I use um, sculpting versus modeling and patch and all that stuff. And um, you know the truth is that when it comes to uh, doing sculpting, many times you will actually uh, mix it all up uh, into into one. So I think that if you're looking at this uh, fusion model here, um, where this is a modeling, um, you know, pure what we would call standard modeling environment in here. We got some extrusions. Uh, did our, uh, some, put some um, just like a, a little plastic piece that has a couple of uh, of hex nuts pressed into them. You have probably seen some some of these before. Uh, this was, um, I, I should have looked up the name. There was somebody who was asked about making kind of like a handle for like a crossbow style. And it had like a piece like this as the thing that would go inside of um, mounted to, and then it would have a sculpted um, piece around it. And the thing, the truth is that normally um, when you are working um, with Sculpt, I, I don't think you can ever get into a point where you don't um, most of the times need to merge it with a modeled part. So I think that today's um, tutorial is going to be helpful. Um, we're going to go into the Sculpt uh, space. I'm going to show you a couple of tools that I've not shown before uh, on this live stream when it comes to, uh, to using, using Sculpt and then kind of like how we get it wrapped around this uh, this one piece. So let's let's stop talking and let's get rocking. <laughs> um, hope all you guys are doing doing good on this Thursday. So yeah, so I modeled this part up here. You can see here that it's an assembly. Um, it has a, a handle component. Uh, what is literally just um, this piece? I, I call it a piece of plastic uh, that has the cutout for some hex uh, screws. And these two hex screws are right here, um, sitting right in here. I downloaded those from MacMaster. If you watched the live stream earlier in the week, you should you should have felt pretty comfortable with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the sculpting workspace. But I, I think maybe sometimes there's a little bit of, of a wrong um, idea about what what this sculpt space is. Or at least I, I I should admit, for me personally, in the past. I've always looked at, at, at the Sculpt workspace more as a you know consumer product and not thinking about mixing it in with our standing modeling environment. So if you're brand new to sculpting, I'll show you um, kind of like some of the basics. If I'm going a little bit too fast, just remember you can always uh, rewind the video uh, when it comes up on YouTube and, uh, and rewatch it again, I guess. So up here, we can click on this create, uh, create form. Now, when you click on that, you're going to get a, a little dialog box that is tell, telling us that we're getting into the Sculpt workspace. You can turn it off. I like to keep it on just because then I just get reminded that I'm in the Sculpt workspace. And you will see that the dialog changes into uh, the Sculpt environment. Now, I think for most people that, um, you know, if, when you get in here, if you've never been in here before, it seems very, very overwhelming. But there is really only a few tools that kind of like um, you kind of like use in here. First of all, I'm going to use the standard modeling kind of approach to this. I'm going to go up and create a new sketch. That's not new. And I'm going to select this bottom plane that I have down here. That's pretty straightforward too. C for circle. That's 
standard. And I'm just going to draw a circle out here. I'm going to make it 25 uh, millimeters just like this. Hit enter. And, uh, and now we just have a sketch here. Now, just like inside uh, when we're doing standard modeling, um, if we go up to uh, the create drop down, there is an extrude command in here. So that should make most people uh, feel comfortable. And now we can select this and we can drag the handle up just like we would do uh, if we're modeling. We can give it a length. I think this one here is a hundred millimeters. Oh, um, in here. Let me just do that one more time. I moved too fast. Um, I just undid that. Let's go ahead and do an extrude and uh, select the ring, hundred millimeters. So just <laughs> I went. To, I hit enter just by. Uh, by normal reaction. So one thing I want to show you over here that you need to be somewhat aware of is the face count. So you see here on on these, if you're new to the sculpting environment, you see that that our our tube here is kind of broken up into different segments, and you can regulate those over here so I can make it less, um, or you can make it uh, many. How many you want. Normally you don't want more than, than you really need. I'm gonna leave this one at, at eight uh, sections here. So that means this is kind of like broken up into to eight sections. And, and the rest of it is fairly normal to what you normally are used to in the extrude command. So now we have this tube and it has, um, it has eight sections uh, on it here. Now, um, because that this thing you can see how it's kind of wrapped into to our our solid piece here um we we could actually go ahead and and, and move it you can actually right click in here and select move and this will be considered a body just like anything else and uh, and we can now move that in here now the reason I'm, I'm i'm showing you that is because if you have done the move command before, and we use that all the time inside of the modeling workspace, right? If uh, if you if you use the move command, this triad here, you should be fairly familiar uh, with with this triad um, in here, and that's the same thing we're going to be using most of the time inside using uh, the sculpt uh, tool. So. What we're going to do is we're going to right click and click edit form. That is the trick to now start shaping uh, this sculpting tube we have. So right click and select edit form and you get this uh, dialog box up here. And um, if I just go over and I hover over this little, I'm zooming in a little, hovering over this little point and I left click on it, I will get that same dialog box as uh, as we just saw. And I can now grab either an arrow and you will see how I can start pulling um, in, in this shape. I can also grab the square here and kind of like pulling it, whatever you want. Um, and this is what sculpting kind of does. It will, uh, it will start pulling in the shape. I'm just gonna do uh, control uh, Z to, uh, to kind of like go undo back. So I selected just the point right there and I will pull in that point. You can kind of see how it's going sharp like that. If I, in the other hand, uh, click on an edge and I drag on that, I will actually now pull in the edge. So think about like where you're placing this is kind of like where you grab your hand. If I grab onto the face, then I'm pulling in the entire face. Okay, so that's kind of like the three different places you normally would go. You would either go a, a point and drag that out. You will do some kind of a face and drag that out. It could also be this um, edge here, drag that out, or a face and drag that out. That's the three different places we are normally dragging uh, around on this part. Now, this dialog box over here maybe looks like there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's really not. So transform mode is the triad you're seeing right now. These other ones are just kind of like filtering down from that point. So if I click on the next one, you will see on the, the keep an eye on this triad here, you will see how we are losing function. So that's just arrow and faces. 
that will only give you the rotation and that will give you the scaling tools. This one here is just giving you everything. So that's where you normally keep it at. The next one over here is uh, where it's pulling from. So world space is the general place you will normally pull from. You can also go from the view or local, but I'm always keeping it, keeping it there. Okay, uh, another trick you should know about, right click edit form, is that you saw that I left click once and I get uh, an edge here. Uh, but if I instead double click on an edge, then it actually selects the entire circle. So right click edit form, if I click once, it will just only pull there. Um, but if I double click on the edge, then it will give me the whole edge. And now I can move that whole edge uh, whatever whatever I want. So if I start dragging in that here, you will see that now I'm pulling out the whole thing because I have an edge. That brings up um, another thing, and that is these sex segments uh, that you see that I created on the, on the perimeter. Um, it's very normal inside of sculpting to also insert edges. Um, and that is really all it does, is it inserts more edges. So if I double click on this edge here, you will see that I actually get um, a green edge. And if I now give that some kind of a value and place that here, now you will see that if I go back and, and hit edit form and select that edge again and pull in it, that now I'm, I'm not pulling from down here. Now I'm actually pulling from where the edge uh, is. Though I am also pulling at this section down here, and that's because this will always stay uh, with curvature continuously to that edge. So if I wanted this bottom section to stay straight, all I would have to do was to insert another uh, edge uh, around here. And now you will see that when I go in and pull in this now, now this will stay straight because the curvature is, is down there. So I hope this kind of like gives you uh, an idea about what we're really doing in here. Now, the other thing that you might want to might want to know as a little um, tip is um, that many times we also use symmetry when we are pulling in things in here. And symmetry, you, the way it works is that if I click on on this here. Well, before I do symmetry, let me show you how it looks before. If I right click and hit edit form, select this edge, and I, for example, grab here and start pulling out, you can clearly see that I'm pulling out in that uh, direction there. Um, but what I can do is, and this is just a helpful tool, I can insert a symmetry mirror, and you select two faces, and then you get a green line, and that tells me now that there's symmetry here. So if I go back in and select that edge again and drag this out, now you can see we have the symmetry that both of them are going in that direction. So symmetry can be extremely uh, helpful. Another thing that is not uncommon to do with this kind of shapes is to actually go in and select a certain portion and you can see how my symmetry kicked in. I select all the stuff in blue, all the yellow got highlighted and hit delete on your keyboard. And then you actually, now we just killed that uh, selection there, but that could maybe give us a little bit of better tool to, uh, if we go back in here, edit form, double click edge. Now we maybe uh, want to, to kind of like work. We maybe don't want it to be completely round. Uh, maybe we just want to pull it in there. So be aware of that it's not uncommon to delete sections and I'll show you, we'll bridge them together in a second. Okay, so now you should somewhat have, right click edit form, have a good idea about how uh, we can kind of pull uh, in different things in here, uh, let it go in, in, in different uh, directions and stuff. So here comes the next tip, and that is to use uh, a hotkey like the Alt key. If I select this edge, and I grab this section here and I hold down, I'm not holding down the Alt key, just my mouse cursor. You will see that we're just pulling out like this and I can drag that section out how far I want. But if I hold down the Alt 
key and drag on my keyboard, then you see how it's actually inserting a whole new section. So that's a brand new section that gets inserted. This can be really handy when you start uh, modeling things up uh, that we can actually hold down all and I can start kind of like pull out a section, let go uh, of the alt key and then I can hold it down again. I can drag out a new section and this kind of gives me uh, a neat tool to kind of like create these new sections. So that's the alt key for that. I probably like the option key on your Mac, I think. Um, that can be uh, extremely handy to kind of work to build this kind of section out here. Um, I could also use that on the back edge here. Um, so where we just delete that section, if I double click on this edge, then it selects the whole edge. If, um, if I start dragging right now, you will see that I'm just pulling the whole shape out. But if I hold down the Alt key and start dragging, then I'm actually getting a new section. Um, that means that I now have a little bit of control where I could maybe add a new section going, going in here and kind of start closing this section around uh, our, our model block so they kind of like intersect so we can, uh, we can fill, um, we can kind of like fill them up uh, later or whatever, whatever you want. So I hope that this, uh, this kind of uh, is helpful. We can also go down here in the bottom down here. Uh, maybe uh, we insert another edge down here. Let's just double click on this one. Insert an edge here. Um, and now I could right click edit form, select this edge here and maybe I want to pull this out a little bit. So I kind of have, this is kind of like a hand grip for a bow. So kind of like your top of your hand's gonna rest here. And, uh, and now we kind of like have a little bit of uh, convex out, I think it is, uh, to, go, to go out here. And you can actually also, you can double click this edge, hold down control and double click this edge. And now we actually can pull in both those edges at the, at the same time. So that's, that's a neat thing to know. Um, we could also go in here and maybe select uh, this edge and this edge and maybe I just make this concave a little bit uh, in here. So this is kind of how you will you will module up um, with with this and, and and you know you could start playing around with um, inserting sections in here and start you know making uh, sections for where uh, you, your, your hand would kind of like fit uh, nicely uh, around here. Okay, uh, so with this here, um, let's just go in and, uh, and, and I wanted to show you something I had not shown you uh, before, and that's actually how we can build up uh, different uh, edges here. So let me just go in here and uh, get out of the tool here, and I'm just gonna select these edges here, hit delete, um, so I kinda like brings up a, a, a wider, uh, area right here. So one of the things that if you follow me so far, I think that we can all agree on this is pretty cool. We're kind of like pulling and, and, and shaping this. This would be a hard shape to do in the standard uh, modeling environment. But now we come to the point where we kind of like got to, well, it's got to turn into a solid uh, at the end. So I wanted to show you three different ways uh, to kind of close this uh, together um, in a way. So the first one I want to show you, bridge, create a bridge and get over it. <laughs> um, so the first one I want to show you is in here is called bridging. And, and it's fairly straightforward. Uh, so if I go in here, I can select bridge and I can select these edges here on one side and I can select side two over here and select the other side over here like that and uh, then I can kind of create how many pieces I want between here and you will see that that got that got bridged together in there so it kind of built in uh, this bridge and that's that's extremely helpful uh, tool to use there but the other thing I wanted to show you was that we can actually 
Um, and I'm just going to try to make this shape a little bit more interesting, maybe. I want to pull these edges forward a little bit so we get a little bit more of a angle on these here. I'm going to actually maybe take, right click edit, select this one, select this edge. Let's see what happens if we pull this. Right now we're getting a little bit more of a of a shape that we maybe would like. So pull this to here. So this is what you do normally if you ever play with sculpting. This is pretty common that you kind of work in this regard, right? Like looking at it. Now, the other thing we can do to close this off is um, to actually create kind of like a flat plane. So I'm gonna go in and use the offset plane that we normally use inside the model environment. And I'm just gonna create a plane, standard plane. It's gonna just be above things here. That's a standard plane right here. Then you can go in and create a plane on that. I'm just gonna go top view. Oops. Let's look straight down at our part here. And I'm just gonna sketch, um, that's just a, a flat plane that's gonna sit up here. Um, and again, you can divide this into uh, to multiple seg segments, how many segments you wanna get in here. I'm just gonna say okay to that. And then, um, let me get symmetry on that one too. So now we're actually working with two different kind of sculpt the bodies here. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to shape this top flat one to kind of become the ceiling we want on this bow handle. Um, so one of the first things I would probably do is I would go in, right click, hit edit form. If I double click on the face, then you will actually see I'm going to select the whole thing. So I'm going to kind of like just line this up. See, there's our opening. So I'm just going to make sure that this is kind of close to where this one. And then what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to align every single vertice up to where about I need a vertice uh, to kind of connect because we're going to use what is called the welding tool. So I'm going to select this endpoint and drag this bag a little bit about as far as I can kind of get that bag in there. Maybe I double click on this edge so I select that whole edge. I can kind of make the whole thing a little narrower and like that might be good. So right now I have this point to this point, this point to this point. We got this point to this point. So these two gotta kind of go together. I'll pull that a little bit closer like that. And then of course this shape is gonna kind of like fall down. So uh, let's drag this, get the arrow and drag this one a little bit further up there. This one go, oh, double click so you get the whole edge. Move that up like that. And then I can actually just grab the arrow here and start bringing this somewhat down to about where I think uh, I kind of want this. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Double click this edge. Just gonna move that up a little bit. And I mean, I, I think you can all think about that this, this is a little bit more about practice than, and I'm, I'm definitely not the master in this. There's a lot of people that are a lot better at, at these tools than I am. Um, but now let's see, see here. So I have this edge to this edge. I have this edge to this edge. What is maybe, I actually liked, if I can get them a little bit closer to one another, might make me feel a little bit better about it. This edge to this edge. This edge to this edge, this edge to this edge, those two are good, this one is good, this one to this one, and then I think we have all the points we need here. If we were missing some of these, we could, um, we could start to add more, I would add another edge if I found that, you know, I was missing a point, I could just double click here and insert uh, another edge like this and, and I now had it. So here's the second tool I want to show you. Now, before I do that, I'm going to turn the symmetry off. I found that to be the best. So I'm going to turn the symmetry off of this one and the symmetry of the other one. And then I'm going to show you uh, the, the weld command. And that would weld the vertices together. So I'm going to click vertices. And then I'm literally just going to go around and weld these two together. Now look at how it jumps here. 
that's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna go over and select these here, and you will see that the shape is gonna kind of like hopefully start shaping in when we start closing this. Now, I always try to make a point of kind of attacking each side at the time, okay? Uh, so I don't just do one side and come back because if, if something is off then I want to catch it now and uh, and not later on I like pulling this together like this Okay, and if somebody had done a lot of of this kind of stuff They probably have something to add to this. So I encourage you to share uh, your knowledge uh, with the rest of us That would be appreciated Okay, so now we're just gonna kind of take the last vertices together here. And we're kind of like just welding the whole thing uh, together uh, like this. And we can now see that we have kind of closed that shape up. Now, a couple of things that you might want to, uh, to be, so, so now this is back to being one shape again. Uh, so we can right click it, edit. We could add, I'll probably actually add the symmetry back in. Select here. So now we got the symmetry back in. So now you could start to, um, to kind of start working uh, with the shape again and start maybe start doing um, different types of, uh, you know, aligning things like this and get the, the different shapes kind of pulled in um whatever you kind of want here you also should know that there is some tools in here uh that can help you do other things so you can for example go in here and you can do something like uh you can flatten so we can actually go in here and say we want to flatten uh these vertices here to a plane for example this bottom plane down here so then they will all end up being kind of parallel with that. Uh, so be aware of that you have uh, a lot of a lot of different tools uh, to do that. And at this point, like I said, at this point you probably would start uh, working with some of the different tools to kind of like getting this uh, closer to you know the shape you you maybe want. Maybe I didn't want that big bump uh, up here. So let me select these two. Um, Another thing you can actually do is you can reset the pivot point to there. And now I could kind of start working with this shape. Okay, um, so we're coming up on the half an hour. So that was a way to, first we saw the bridging these things together. We saw welding uh, this together here. And don't forget that the bottom uh, in here is still open. Now I'm just going to move this shape back into uh, where it was somewhat before maybe. Move it in like this here. I don't want it to interfere with the screws. Let me just grab this edge here. Like that. Move that in a little bit. Um, so when I hit finish form now, this is just considered a surface uh, in here. And actually maybe, and we're back in the modeling space now. So I could actually go in here and hit Q Select that top face and do maybe, maybe I'll do like an offset face down here just to move that down. Um, but you will see that it's open in the bottom here. Um, another thing that can be really handy tool to use is the patch environment. So if I click on patch, this is surfaces. And uh, I'm going to just go in and create another sketch right on the bottom. And I'm going to hit uh, my S key, uh, so like my center rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a big rectangle. This doesn't really matter. I'm going to make it um, a flat surface here. Like this here. Hit OK. Um, and then inside of the patch tool, I can hide, hide our body for a sec. And um, in this patch tool here, there's like something called boundary fill. Boundary fill, I will select this face, this body, and then when I click in here, ooh, 
This is not watertight. Okay, so this plane here is not completely catching up to that. Hang on a second. Go back into uh, this workspace here. I'm gonna select this edge here, edit form. And I am just gonna hit Alt, make another section below that. See, there wasn't in a section, at least that's what I'm thinking. Okay, now it should be enclosed. <laughs> Let's go into the pet environment. Boundary fill, I'm gonna select these two here. And then you will see that this turns kind of green. If I select this internal cell here with this boundary fill, this will now become a solid model. And I can now just hide our surfaces. And this is now a full solid, just like um, our handle is, or, or this, this here is. And the last thing I will do is go back into the model environment, go back into combine, and I can now combine these two solids together and that will now become one solid body. Now, I just realized as I did this that I actually did do one mistake because I actually wanted to have created all these things in here in the handle body and not in the top assembly, but passing the 30 minute mark, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sweat it too much. So what we have here, and I hope this was useful, uh, what we have here is we're ending up with a full solid model of, and I probably would work on this little dip up there a little bit more, but what we have is a full solid model uh, of a, a handle, I guess for a, 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 a crossbow type thing that is mounted into a modeled up bracket. So I hope that this is uh, I hope this is useful. Uh, going back into a little bit to the sculpting in environment, like I I like to think about it as a combination of of these. So you know, there's one part of us that just model things up all in the model environment, but when you get into that sculpting environment, where you can actually start um, you know crossing over between the sculpt and the model and start putting it together. So I hope I showed you some new tools with the bridge, with the with the weld, and if you're brand new uh, to, to this whole thing, there's a couple of other sculpt live stream in the, uh, back in the day, so we can definitely make sure you get those. That was what I had planned to show you. Um, next week, there are not gonna be any live streams, there might be one on Friday, but next week I'm gonna be out of town, so there's no live streams, just wanna make sure you know that tomorrow, we are gonna do cam. So if you are into cam, tomorrow should definitely be something uh, you hopefully will, uh, will find interesting. All right, people, with that, I hope you like this. If you do, thumbs up. If you don't, be honest, thumbs down. And again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would really, really appreciate it. That is how I can kind of show my boss and say, hey, people are actually uh, watching this. I truly appreciate you taking the time. If you're watching the recording, Thank you so much. If you are in the live stream, but I truly appreciate you taking the time, I will jump in there and say hi to everybody. Take care, folks, and hope to see you tomorrow. Bye.